Hello, greetings. Uh, so let's take a look at problem one from the chapter two problem set. A lot of the problems from the chapter two problem set are gonna deal with identifying uh, phases, right? And so this will be important as we begin to work with cubic equations of state to knowing what phase I have in terms of what route should I select if more than one is given to me um, from my equation of state. And the first thing I'm gonna do with essentially all of these problems is sketch a phase diagram, okay? And so I cannot emphasize uh, enough to you how valuable it is uh, to be able to sketch here pure component phase diagrams and then later on binary phase diagrams. No matter how poor your uh, artistic ability, all right, you'll see mine uh, aren't the greatest, uh, they could be invaluable aids in terms of feeling your way through a problem. Okay, uh, So let's start with uh, problem one. Okay, So problem one, um, A, use the steam tables to determine the phase of water uh, liquid or vapor at the following conditions. Okay, and so it looks like we're given a bunch of pressure temperature combos. Uh, so then the first thing I'm going to do if I need to identify the phase is I am going to sketch a P versus T phase diagram. Okay, so ideally I would sketch a Clapeyron plot log P versus inverse T. But we'll just do P versus T for now um, so as not to uh, confuse you. So if you need to recall what a P versus T phase diagram looks like, look at the uh, first set of nodes from chapter two. Okay, well, let's see, get my stylus on here. Okay, my picture, okay, for A, will just be, if I were to plot pressure versus te temperature, and I'm looking at my uh, equilibrium curve for vapor-liquid coexistence, I'm gonna have this exponential dependence. Okay, it doesn't matter how well you can sketch, all right, just need a sketch, okay, where in a P versus T phase diagram, Okay, this is my coexistence line. Okay, so I can label it as say saturation. Okay, so if I'm on my um, saturation curve, okay, at a given temperature, if my pressure is greater than PSAT, okay, that'd be my reminder that this is a compressed liquid. Okay, if at a given temperature my pressure is less than that at saturation, okay, um, this is going to be well, it gets a couple of um, uh, different names, right? But so by compressed, I'm going to write liquid up here, okay, down here, all right, this is going to be vapor, okay, and so uh, the typical name I typically think of is uh, superheated, all right, you know, and where does superheated come from, oh, I just drew a line, is, you know, again, the, the thought exercise is, um, if I'm at this point on my saturation curve, okay, um, so uh, if at this temperature, all right, so let me draw an isotherm, Okay, so if I draw an isotherm, okay, here I have saturation. So if I keep temperature constant, but increase the pressure, all right, I know that's gonna push me towards a liquid phase. Okay. So here, I have two phases in coexistence. If I have two phases coexistence in say a magical piston cylinder device, and I push down on the piston so as to increase the pressure, that's just gonna drive the molecules closer together, right? It's gonna drive me towards um, that liquid phase, right? And so it's often called a compressed liquid, because uh, the pressure is greater than saturation um, at that uh, given temperature. The other name it's often given okay, is I could also think of this, and again, you got a part of my poor skills, <laughs> poor drawing skills, but if I draw an isobar, a line of constant pressure. So if here I'm on my saturation curve, okay, um, and now I keep pressure constant, so I keep pressure constant by walking along this isobar, um, so if pressure is held constant and I decrease the temperature, okay. so again, I'm in my piston cylinder apparatus um, at two-phase coexistence, uh, but now I'm going to decrease the temperature, right? I'm going to remove heat um, from my system. So if I decrease the temperature, that's going to drive me towards the left on that isobar that's going to push me towards the liquid phase, right? So two-phase coexistence, if I decrease the temperature, that's going to push me towards liquid, okay? So besides compressed liquid, the other name this often gets is subcooled liquid, right? Subcooled just being is at constant temperature, I'm, or constant pressure, if I decrease the temperature, it drives me towards that uh, liquid phase. Okay, in terms of the vapor phase, you can go through the thought exercise again. So if here I'm at two-phase coexistence, so if I imagine the case of walking along this isotherm, so if I keep temperature constant, but decrease the pressure, okay, now pull up on that uh, piston head, that's going to drive me towards um, the vapor phase. Okay. If I'm walking along in this isobar, but now I increase uh, the temperature, 
Okay, so that's going to drive me towards the vapor phase. Uh, T is greater than T sat. I'm increasing the temperature. All right, it often gets the name of superheated uh, vapor. Okay, cool. Okay, so compressed liquid, superheated, superheated vapor. Uh, and again, depending on the thought exercise um, you you perform, all right, these things often get uh, different names. Okay, so now when I'm looking at uh, problem A, okay, so in problem A, okay, when we're given a given temperature and pressure combo, uh, the key is is just to find say. Uh, well, whatever piece of information is most convenient. So, say 25 degrees C in one bar. So, uh, what would be key is to go to my um, saturated steam, or my steam tables. If I can find P set at 25 degrees C, that becomes my reference point on my saturation curve. And then I just need to see if you know P is greater than P set or less than P set uh, to determine where I am. Or if at a pressure of one bar, I can find T set easily, find my reference point on my uh, curve. Then I can just compare T. Uh, to that TSAT and see where I am. Okay, let's do it, um, and that way you can see exactly uh, what I need. Okay, so first we're going to look at 25 degrees C um, and one bar. Okay, sorry I'm a little rusty on my tab. Hopefully my handwriting will uh, will improve. Okay. So uh, let me I can drag my uh, head back over here. So in the next window I have the uh, appendix from the text. So I just downloaded them from the course canvas page. Okay, so if I scroll down, a little bit about units, uh, critical properties, okay, and then we have heat capacities, ideal gas heat capacities, and then steam tables. Okay, um, so this will remind you of, of what uh, your units are uh, as you copy properties from your steam tables, um, and then. Um, here is your reference dates, so this will make more sense in, in chapter five. So we're um, of how we're defining things in relation to um, what reference date we're adopting. But, um, but yeah, so the first table E1 is my saturated steam table. So your saturated steam tables uh, is ordered such that um, you can specify essentially temperature, right? First column temperature, um, and so um, you, know, you specify temperature, then you could read off uh, vapor pressure. Uh, and all of your other saturation properties. Okay, so if I were to go the temperature route, okay, so here we have a temperature of 25 degrees C in one bar. Okay, and I should take a look back. Uh, pressure is units of one bar. So what I would need to do is if I wanted to specify a temperature of 25 degrees C and figure out what the saturation pressure is, uh, that's going to force me to uh, interpolate here. Okay. Um, so you could, you know, you'd have to interpolate to find P. Um, if I were to go to the superheated steam tables, just as a comparison, what the difference is, is here, you essentially can specify P. Okay, you specify P, then in parentheses below it, it's going to give you the saturation temperature um, at in degrees C. Okay, now 25 degrees C, well, if you think of one bar, so we know that uh, water uh, at one bar boils at 100 degrees C, and from the superheated steam tables, right, we get an exact value of 99.61. Okay, so if I go with that, so um, so if I say at one bar, T sat is equal to 99.61 degrees C. Okay, all right. So if I'm looking at my sketch in my phase diagram, we're going to look at um, reading along. Um, an ISO bar, so if pressure is fixed at one bar. So here, my temperature is 25 degrees C, or 99.61. A temperature of 25 degrees, then T is less than T sat, so that's going to put me in the liquid phase. All right. So T is less than T sat um, at P. Okay. Uh, and so that's going to put me in in my liquid phase. Okay. Cool. I promise my handwriting will improve a uh, new tablet. Okay, let's look at B. So B, oh, not B, uh, another one. We have 80 degrees C and 10 bars. Okay, so if I go 80 degrees C and 10 bar. Okay, so we could probably even stick at my superheated steam tables uh, at 10 bar. Yeah, 10 bar. T 
TSAT's going to be, um, let's just call it 180, 179.89. So we'll say, oh, got the wrong set. Um, so at 10 bar, TSAT is essentially 180 degrees C. And so once again, since T is less than T sat at P, I must have a liquid. Okay, cool. Third is uh, 120 degrees C and 50 bars. Okay, so now we're at, say, 150 degrees C, 120 degrees C. Ah. Let me go back over to my superheated steam tables. So at 50 bars, let's see if it's on here. 50 bars is TSAT. I'm just going to call it 264 degrees C. Um, so at, uh, at 50 bars, TSAT is equal to so 50 bars, TSAT's 263.94. This is called 264 degrees C. So once again, we have T is less than TSAT at P. So therefore, I must have um, a liquid. Ah. Okay, cool. So that's A. Okay, so it's a matter of Finding my reference point on my phase diagram, okay, identifying this point, um, and then keeping either temperature or pressure fixed, and seeing where the other, you know, lies in, in relation to that. Okay, so now B. So now we're told the vapor pressure of bromobenzene at 40 degrees C is 10 millimeters per mercury. Determine the phase of bromobenzene at 40 degrees C and one ATM. Okay, so you shouldn't even need to, to write this one out. Okay, so uh, uh, in terms of pressure conversions, there are a couple that I remember. Um, I remember that one ATM uh, is 760 millimeters of mercury, which is 101.325 kilopascals. Okay, 1.01325 1 bars. Okay, but one ATM is 760 millimeters of mercury. So if at 40 degrees C, my saturation pressure is, is 10 bars, or 10 millimeters per mercury, um, and the pressure increases to 760 millimeters of mercury, what phase am I going to have? Well, I'm going to have a liquid, all right, because P is greater than PSAT uh, at T. C, the normal boiling point of fluorobenzene is 84.7 degrees C. So normal boiling point, what does that mean? Um, that means the boiling point at 1 atm, at atmospheric conditions. So um, at 1 atm, uh, the saturation temperature is 84.7 degrees C. So what is the phase of fluorobenzene at 25 degrees C and 1 atm? Well, since T is less than TSAT, it must be a liquid. Okay. So uh, essentially, <laughs> uh, all of them uh, in, in problem one um, are liquids. Okay. But key here was just just draw a picture, uh, try and you know, make sure you understand um, you know, how to read and interpret a phase diagram, um, and then use that to determine uh, your phase.